heal the world, make this a better place for you and for me and the entire human race. There are people dying, but if you care enough for the living, make a better place for you and for me. Hello everybody, I'm Lady Cheryl. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm starting a new series today and I hope that you will stick with me and learn step by step how to grow food cheaply from seeds during the fall and in some of your climates you'll be able to do it in the winter. Okay, let's get started. Okay guys, I'm getting ready to start some seeds for my fall and winter garden. And as I promised you guys in my live chat on Monday night, I'm gonna take you through this series step by step. So today I'm going to show you the seed starting mix that I love. Jiffy Sea Starting Mix is natural and organic, and it has peat moss in it, coconut coir, and vermiculite. Now, I've tried a lot of different brands. This one is my favorite. I've tried the peat pellets, the coconut coir, um, just planted them in peat moss, but I love this seed starting mix. And when I found out that it wasn't available in a lot of stores, I uh, ordered me enough to last me uh, through 2021. Each, each uh, container, this bag size, will make 12 uh, quarts, dry quarts. And you know, when you add water to it, it'll make it a little more. Now, what I do is I sanitize my seed starting mix. I am going to put it into this large soup pot that I will bleach out and, and continue to use in my kitchen. And I am boiling water in my tea kettle. And I will also add a little pure cold press neem oil. Now you can purchase this neem oil on Amazon or eBay and other stores, but be careful, please do not buy a neem oil mixture. This is absolutely 100% pure neem oil. Okay, so while I'm waiting for my tea kettle to heat up, I'm gonna go ahead and open the bag of Jiffy C starting mix and pour it into this large soup pot. And the reason why I make it in this nice little pot because it has a top on it and I can cover it up should I not um, use all of it today. Okay. So we got all of that. Just making sure. We got all of that out of the container. And I'm going to tilt the tripod so you can see that it's almost full. Now, I used purified drinking water in my teapot because I'm trying to do everything that I can to prevent fungus and fungus gnats. And even though this is natural and organic, it still can have some eggs in here. And also the neem oil is good for killing the eggs and also getting rid of fungus. So I'm going to come back with my tea kettle is uh, boiling. 
Okay, so my teapot is boiling and I've made a little hole down in the center of the pot. And I poured about one third of the water in there. And now I'm gonna start stirring from the outside in and making sure that I'm touching the bottom of the pot. Okay, now I'm gonna move everything to one side. And I do this every season. So you are welcome to go back and look at my older playlist. And now I'm gonna pour about one fourth of the water on this side. And I'm going to make sure that it's mixed all the way at the bottom. And I'm gonna add some of the mixture to the top. From this top, on this side, to the top of the other side, make sure that it is thoroughly mixed up. And now I'm going to turn this around and I'm going to move the product all the way over. And I'm going to take the remaining water and make sure that it reaches the bottom on this side. And we'll pour all the water in. Now I can't tell you exactly how much to use. I know that I only need one teapot of boiling water for this container and that's why I decided to use it again. So this is soupy, it's still water there. I'm all the way at the bottom. You can see that it's thoroughly wet. And now I'm gonna move the top portion that wasn't wet before and stir it up. And I'm going back to the middle and I'm turning everything over and you can see that everything is mixed up. Now, that's it. Now, I do not put my mix into whatever is going to be a tray, a cup, a, a garden a pot until this has thoroughly cooled off. So I'm gonna take this and move it and put it back over there where the stove is. But you know what? Before I do that, I'm going to push this back again to one side and I'm going to take about one tablespoon of neem oil and I'm going to stir it in real good. And I love the smell of the neem oil. And then I'm going to add some more over here and stir it with that neem oil. And while it is moist and hot, the neem oil will be easy to um, distribute among the products. So I moved it over again on this side and I'm just taking a about another tablespoon and then I'm going to stir this neem oil up all the way to the bottom and then I'll take product on this side Continue to stir it up. And don't worry if for some reason you didn't get any neem oil on, you know, a small amount. Don't worry about it. Because when we water 
our containers. I put a little neem oil in my spray bottle of purified drinking water. And that'll also uh, go through the seed starting mix. Now I don't start using tap water or rain water on my seedlings until right before they're getting ready to be transplanted. So up until that time, I only use purified water. And this works for me, and I don't have a lot of fungus issues when I do this. Okay, so this will go on the stove to, to cool off. Not on the uh, burner that, it, that the water is boiling. And then, let me just clean up a little bit of my mess. And that's your seed starting mix. And I'm gonna put it right there in that pot. Okay, and remember guys, you are not sterilizing, you are sanitizing. Now, that bag of Sea starting mix cost me around $5, I think $5.57. And that one bag would be enough for me to start all my seeds. Now what you're looking at here is a seed starter 72 mini greenhouse. This retails at the dollar stores for $5, family dollar and dollar general. I bought this last year uh, at the end of the summer gardening season at 90% off, so I only paid 50 cents for this $5 set. And in here, you get your 72 sales. You see it has the holes in the bottom. You get your tray so that you can water them. And we will be watering from the bottom up. After the first week, I may mist it a little bit across the top to facilitate germination. But after that, it will only be watered at the bottom. You put the water in, relax, come back 10, 15 minutes later, pick it up, and pour the rest of the water out. Okay? And if it was winter time and I needed to facilitate or speed up the germination process, I would put this dome over it because you need a temperature, a steady temperature of 70 degrees or more. And I would put a heating pad that's made specifically for these trays. They're standard. Um, I would put that on it. But this is going out to the greenhouse because my peas and beans germinated in a day and a half. So I know that I don't need this dome. I don't need that extra moisture that would create an environment that would be conducive to, um, to fungus, uh, bacteria and fungus multiplies very quickly in a dark, damp, moist place. So I want this to kind of dry out a little bit since it's so hot outside. We're in 100 degree weather. It's a little bit cooler today because we're getting ready to get some rain. So we're in the uh, 90s. But uh, my timeline on Facebook, uh, a year ago, it was 107, 107 degrees on this day, a year ago. So because I'm going to be planting multiple uh, varieties of, I'm gonna start off with my leafy greens. I don't want these all together because they are not gonna germinate at the same time. So what I do is I just take a little shear and I cut right down the middle. Okay, so the reason why I cut these loose because uh, they all, the seeds will all germinate at a different rate. But as soon as one seed pops up, then I know I can remove it out of this uh, little mini greenhouse. And if I put a label here for curly kale, then all of this will be curly kale. If I'm gonna do, um, let's say, purple top turnips, 
if I decide to do two uh, six packs, then I'll just put purple top turnips on each one and so on and so on until I'm all finished. But right now I'm gonna start off with uh, kale and collards, mustard, red mustard, uh, and, and, and several varieties of kale. Let me go check and see if my seed starting mix has cooled off enough. Okay, I'm gonna move this a little closer. It's cooled off a little, but not all the way, but it's cooled off enough for me to start filling them. And I don't want any soil inside of here. So I'm gonna move this out the way. And I'll just start filling these six packs up and placing them in the dome cover. So that way if I get some soil down here, it won't matter. I'll just pick it up and use it. Let's go closer. And it's a little warm. So I'm just filling these up. I'm not gonna actually use them right now. And I'm just gonna press down so I don't have any air pockets. And it's, like I said, it's still a little warm, but not bad. It's not so hot that I can't work with it. And I'll let this cool for several hours. Oh, I know what I was gonna say, my phone rang. Uh, and the video stopped recording. And what I was going to say was, don't put your seeds into hot seed starting mix because they can fry. Okay, so we got a first one done. And let's get another one. I'm just using the soil around the top because that's what's cooling first. The thing about starting seeds is to be, you need to be well organized and neat. I didn't say pretty, but you need to be neat and don't put off labeling something because you'll think, okay, well, I'll go back and I'll label it later and then you'll, you'll, get, you'll forget. I mean, I do it all the time. Not when I was, a, I did it when I wasn't a senior citizen. So I try to uh, develop good organization habits. And even with that skill set, you still will make mistakes. And little pieces like this, I'm going to hold it in my hand so you can see it. The little larger pieces, go ahead on and remove those. Okay. So you don't want to pack it down too firm but you don't want to have it loose either. Okay, so I know you all don't want to watch me do all of this, so I'm just gonna finish this one. And while I'm doing this, I'm gonna tell you that you can also keep your journal uh, and you don't have to actually put the name on it. You can just label this one, two. Can you see that? You can label this one. You can label this one, one, two, three. And then in your journal, you could put number one is collars, number two is curly kale, number three is four hook kale, you know, and so on and so on. And because I'm going to be doing this every other day, making a video, um, because I really don't like to make videos every day, you'll run out of things to show and then you'll start repeating yourself. I'll probably make a video every two or three days because I'll be doing other things in the food force. Uh, separate of starting seeds, I will, at the end of each of this series, each video in this series, I'll show you what's happening around the food forest and the other things that I'm continuing to do. Okay, guys, I want to show you that I numbered. 
Can you see that? The six pack, this is one. Here's one. So number one will be the curly kale. And for right now, I'll just put number one on the seed packet. One. And next, I'm going to plant the thousand head kale. It'll be number two. Because we like a lot of kale. My uh, grand angels like my kale chips. And I uh, make smoothies. And then I, you know, cook a lot of kale in my uh, mixed greens. So just for the demonstration of this video, I'm not going to go through and show you all the seeds that I'm going to um, put in here today. I don't want to make the video real long. But I'm going to show you how I sow the seeds for two different types of kale. This kale, um, these seeds came from Baker Creek, the heirloom seeds. And um, I can grow them basically all year round, providing I watch them very carefully uh, for aphids and cabbage worms. Now, the curly kale will not attract as many insects as uh, this type of kale or dinosaur kale or I can't think right now but a lot of different varieties of kale but the curly kale does the best so I'm going to open this package and just going to get a few seeds out I'm not opening it up too much just open it a little you know I don't like to wear gloves but for the demonstration today I'm going to I'm going to pour a few seeds out, and they are real small, cabbage, mustard, kale, turnip seeds, they are all real small seeds. I'm going to have to open this package up a little bit more. And I'm going to put three seeds in each cell. And what I'm doing here, you can see that, yeah. I'm just going to move this a little bit back in the middle. A diagonal line. That's how I do it for little small seeds. And then I'm just going to take three. Mm, 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 I dropped some. So I'll just do two there. One, two, three. One, two, three, one two, three, you probably can't see them because they're real tiny. Two, three, and I'll put one more here. And then I'm gonna take my little plastic spoon and I'm simply going to just cover them up because they don't have to go down real deep because the seeds are so small. And I'm gonna press them down. I don't have to water them because they're still nice and moist. So basically, I'm just covering them up. I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm just gonna draw like a little diagonal line just to move some of the potting, uh, the seed starting mix out of the way. And I'm not gonna plant them too deep. And actually, there's enough seeds over here that drop, so I don't have to do this one. And I may just throw one seed or two in here. And I'm gonna put three here. I'm going to put three there, one, two, three there, one, two, three, and I'm only going to choose probably like two of the, the healthiest uh, plants. And you can just take a little potty mix and just sprinkle it on top. But because these seeds are real, real tiny, I'm just gonna pat them down. I'm gonna look real close and make sure I don't see anything. And like I said, the, 
the soil, the seed starting mix is still damp. And these will go out to the greenhouse. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Now I have some seeds down here that I'm gonna pick up. And this one is labeled two. And I'll put a little tape on this to keep it uh, intact so I don't get them mixed up. And I'm just gonna open up this one, which is the thousand head. And I can grow this one all year long too if I want to. And I'm gonna be a little bit more careful about these seeds. I'm gonna make sure I don't sprinkle out too many. Good, I didn't mess up that one. I'm gonna stay on this side of my container so I don't mix up the seeds because they look identical. And I'm just gonna draw a little line right here, diagonally, just shifting the seed starting mix just a little. I feel something big. And I take off, take out big pieces. See that, I take that out. Now I'm gonna take three seeds. One, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three. Might be a little bit more than three. That's okay. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Cause this is number two right here. So I want 12 cells of both of these types of kale. So I'll do one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And then I need to do one, two, three. Come on, I feel nothing dropping. There we go, one, two, and three. And I'll put these seeds on this side of the table so I won't get them mixed up. And now I'm just gonna cover these lightly. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm almost finished. Cover these up. And then in my journal, I'll just document. Two is thousand head kale. I feel something hard here. No, it's okay. And number one is the blue curly kale. And I'm gonna finish the rest of these off camera. And in a few days, I'll bring you back and let you see what they look like when they germinated. Okay. Hey, Bree and Brian. Hi. Okay, look, I'm gonna show you this Swiss shard over here. Okay. 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 Now, after you all went home that day, I, remember those few peas were still in the bowl with the water? Remember? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so what I did was I put them in here. Mm -hmm. And now they're growing up with the Swiss chard. See that? Yeah. They're growing fast. So any place where Daddy we don't will. get a pea to grow over here, especially like down on that end, remember there? And then across where the large trellis is right here, I'm gonna scoop these up and I'm gonna put them in their place. So, this is just a little damp and I'm gonna water it just a little. It's, I like it. Thank you, see so just a little water. Yes. So they can keep growing. Mm -hmm. It's not a lot because they're gonna get tired. No, it, they will get, they'll drown mm -hmm. and the roots will start dying if they get too much water. So everybody understand? Yes, yes. ma'am. Very good. Okay, guys, let's go close. Right here, you can see that's a bean. That's a bean. That's a bean. But right here, you see this little bitty plant right there where my finger is. That, and you see the little red stem? Don't touch it. That's a marigold.
That's where we have Mary goes in this bed. Here's three more right here. See them? Yeah. And there's one right over there. We're going to pluck these out after they get their second set of leaves. And then we're going to put them in the bricks. Oh, and that's why I really wasn't concerned about us uh, pulling up the Mary goes. Because I knew that we had seeds that had self-seeded in this bed. And we can always transplant them. Wow. And since we have more growing season, we still have August, September, October. And we usually don't get a freeze until around the middle of November. So that gives us 100 days that we can still grow marigolds. And right over here, move back, Brian. 100 days? Mm -hmm. Move back, Brian. See right here in these little blocks? We can also put marigolds in here. That's enough days to plant 100 yeah. marigolds. We don't need 100, though, this time of year. Okay. Brian is watering the peas. Very good, Brian. And let that soak in. Come all the way down, Brian. Very good. What all the peas on that side. Good job, Bria. Good job. You want to say hi, everybody? Hi. Okay, keep going. Keep going, Bria. Just keep walking. You don't want to put too much water on them. Just a little. They just need a little drink. Good job. Keep going. Go all the way down the line. Are you going to water? Me? No, you're doing it. Keep going. All the way down, Bria. Keep going. Is this so crazy? Yes. Wet, wet those two. They're, they're germinating. Keep going all the way to the edge of the brick. Good job. Good job. Now bring you the water can. Don't put it on your clothes so you won't be dirty. Yes, ma'am. All right. Now, ah. Come on. Okay, that's good, Bria. That's good. Okay, come on. Now I want to show you something else. Hey, my first vine squash vine border where'd it go right there now, we're not gonna let it get away you see it goes inside of the plant and it eats it from the outside pardon me the inside out and it thinks it's getting ready to uh, get away let me pick up my scissors because i did surgery on my plant and the reason why i knew oh, no. that it was in here first i saw some decaying flowers and leaves. That means that the nutrition was being cut off, so I followed it and ran it down. And then I saw swelling in this part of the vine, and when I used my scissors to cut it open, there it was. Yes. So you do not put this in your compost because it could be eggs in here. And you know, you don't want to put anything where it has already been infected. So this will go into the garbage bag that has the plastic bags in it. Yeah. so that it we won't uh, com compost this and it goes right back into the soil. Might have got away and moved on. There we go. See it? Yes. Get it close, Brian. Another one. Yes, and it's trying to get away. It's trying to go down in there. And we're going to cut this bad boy up. Bria, open the bag open. Brian, you still got it? You got it? Yes. Because we're going to cut it up. Okay. So you see there are two right here. Yeah, then they must be a family. Can you please take a picture of them? Thank you. So we're going to cut them up. Bria, you're going to get the bag so we can put that in there. Mm -hmm. So when you see your vines are dying like this, you're taking this, Brian. When you see your vines start dying like this and then you see some swelling, you're going to have some borers. I say borders sometimes, but they're called borers, B-O-R-E-R-S. Okay, guys, what we're doing this morning is we are going to reapply wood chips. Brian, would you lift that up where you are so you can show them what the ground looks like? That board, that piece of cardboard. You see Brian back there? He and I cut this uh, these boxes I've been accumulating. And go ahead, Brian, and you can lay it down so they can see. And we overlap it so that you don't have any seams. Go ahead, Brian. Pick up that red chair. And make sure you don't bump into anything. Pick it up. Turn, watch, 
Yes, watch where you're coming. Good job, Brian. And then you're going to put it right here where my finger is. And that'll keep the cardboard in place until we can put these staples right here. Can you see that? Scattle. We're going to take those, take a hammer, and put these staples in there, and that'll keep it in place. Okay. In extreme heat, you have to stay real hydrated and even children. And so to prevent me from having to keep washing glasses, I use disposable cups and I put their names on them. And then I just stick them in the refrigerator so that when they ask for more water, it's already there or juice. Okay, my grand angels love the apples from my apple tree. How does it taste, Brian? Good. Thumbs up? <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. What about you, Bria? Good. What did you tell me the other day about this apple? It was so good. <laughs> you told me it was your favorite apple. <laughs> All right. When children help in the garden, they're learning, and they feel proud when they see uh, a seed that was planted and grew into a tomato or to pr produce tomatoes, peppers. They are more prone to eat them. My grand angels love to eat the fruit right off the vine or right off the fruit tree. They ate apples and grapes today and they thoroughly enjoy it. It's a it's a feeling. I can't explain it to you when I see them eating food that we have grown and um you know work together to achieve this. It's just a remarkable feeling, especially with Brian, because Brian is a child that is a very picky eater, and he doesn't eat too many fruits or vegetables, but he is doing better. He will eat the fruit and vegetables, most of them that I grow. So I'm very thankful. Well, this concludes this video. I hope I share something that you can use. In a few days, I'm going to share with you the progress of the seeds that I sowed today. Well, I know you guys know that God loves you and I love you too. Thank you for watching. Bye now. Coming soon, as a matter of fact, it'll be August, the relaunch of Lady Cheryl's products. These products are all inspired by nature for your hair, skin, and spirit, and they are made with love right in my kitchen from my heart to yours.